uh, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to excursion number two you join me here on the second half of my Sunday exploring the lower part of a valley just below where I encountered the deer I had some questions in the comments section from Hampshire Outdoors about animal tracking and stalking of deer which has led me to recall how I think like a deer The following diagram is a piece of information I discovered about a decade ago from some research on a topic called the Syrian gazelle boy. The Syrian gazelle boy was found with gazelle, running with gazelle. He was clocked at 50 kilometers an hour. They tried to catch him with helicopters and stuff like this and eventually they did capture him. And he drew this map. He do, drew this map about how the gazelle operate. He had by the end, by the time he got uh, captured, he had worked his way up to kind of second in command within the gazelle. And this drawing is kind of the way I look at when I go out looking for deer, when they decoy, um, and where where to find the the deer, the young deer, or the you know, it's how I look at it. It's like you have to know where you are in the situation as well. So. That's all I wanted to try and explain was the deer seem to walk in like a V formation, uh, almost like a flock of birds. And the ones that are to the left are left behind in moments of danger. And the ones that are on the right, they are the stronger ones. And they're there to act as decoys. So they're there to draw the danger away. And this is why they squeak and they whistle and stuff like this. They're trying to draw you away. Yeah, that's kind of how I think like a deer. But let's let's go into more of the story of the gazelle boy because I think it's interesting. Um, so back in 1960, there was this guy called Jean-Claude Auger or Jean-Claude Armand or Armand. He had the opportunity to meet some tribes on his explorations of the Sahara near, near Morocco. I think it's called Spanish Sahara. Here he found out an intriguing story of a boy who lived with the gazelles. So he, he heads off on his camel and soon locates gazelle boy with his herd. And after a few days of observation, he manages a short interaction with the boy. Or so the story goes. Anyway, Gazelle Boy is a feral child who is completely integrated into his herd. He's fairly clean, strong and well-nourished, joyful to the point of ecstasy, and most significantly, he's free. There's a lot of blissed out watching, sniffing and licking going on in the herd, you know? Anyway, after a month, the gazelles head off somewhere to urgent business and our man uh, limps back to human civilization, starving, dehydrated, and covered in cuts and sores, but really, really pleased with this interaction. He then goes back to France and reports what he's seen, and there is some documented proof of this report somewhere. And anyway, Auger then returns to the Ria de Oro about two years later and reestablished his relationship. The story got all the way to the to Life magazine in I think it was May 1946 it managed to make it to Life magazine um, and I think at this point they realized that certain dangers exist for taking somebody out of this environment but it it got traction and it ended up that they did try to capture him um, and when they tried to capture him uh, Auger was in the jeep and at the last minute, Auger pulled the steering wheel and the, the jeep got a, a puncture and they missed him again. And I think the next time that he was captured was 1966 uh, was the next time they interacted with him. Or maybe 1966 was when he was moved to Syria, uh, Baghdad, Syria area. So it, it, it gets a bit cloudy because they, they were trying to protect him. They were trying to protect him from getting photographed and... I believe that any photographs that exist online are not of the Syrian gazelle boy. But that he was clocked at 50 kilometers an hour. So there's some people say he was doing 50 miles an hour, but 
most of the accounts that I can read say he was doing 50 kilometers an hour. He had uh, massive um, ankles and stuff like this. And he ate roots. He, you know, he ate the odd um, lizard and stuff like this when there wasn't food. Just to give you some perspective on 50 kilometers an hour, Usain Bolt estimated maximum speed is 44.7 kilometers per hour. So, you know, Usain Bolt is doing 30 miles an hour. For Gazelle Boy to be doing 50 kilometers an hour, he's he's Olympic style athlete. The story gets a bit darker as it moves on, but and just while we're in the light side, this is when when they did eventually capture him. I think there was a NATO base involved in trying to capture him in 1966 with some nets and stuff like this from a helicopter. Um, they didn't manage to to capture him either. But anyway, this is where the, it's a bit cloudy as to what what actually happened. But this map, my first encounter with this map was 10 years ago. And to me, it was that they eventually either studied him or they studied the movement of the gazelles or the gazelle boy explained the way the gazelles move. And it was from this diagram that I show, I'm going to show you that again now. It's from that diagram that I kind of thought about when I go out looking for for deer and stuff like this, I always think about this diagram. And when I watch deer, I, I watch them and kind of apply this diagram to them. And they do travel in a sort of V formation. Um, and if you watch the video that I made just previous to this, you'll see that, you know, when I, when I came up behind these deer, I came up into the back of the V formation the strong deer on the right hand side try and pull me away from the younger deer and the, the, the deer that are in fawn I think it is the ones that are going to have babies um, the older stronger ones try and pull you away and distract you um, and that's why I stopped when I did because I thought okay maybe I've just divided the herd and the, the other half of the herd are behind and then they start popping their heads out lower down the mountain and after an hour by the time I started making my way back um, they're expecting their own friends to be coming back and it, it turns out it's it's me you know so anyway that's that's all I wanted to explain was this kind of V formation um, maybe it will help somebody who's looking for deer Another thing I do when I'm when I'm looking for deer to think like a deer is I don't just sit in one place waiting for deer. You, you can do this. You can get some luck doing it. But I think the advice of finding the deer first. So you go out and you, you look for these animals. And then when you find them, that's when you, you change tactic a little bit. And then you hide on them. So they hide on you and you hide on them. Um, but you you really must go out to find them. Um, because they're sitting somewhere. And then they'll move and they'll have a backup plan. And you'll see a lot of where their feet fall. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, what else was there? Yeah, so that's the story of the Saharan gazelle boy. Um, and his uh, 50 kilometers an hour and his map of how to how deer how gazelle move and I think that can be applied to how deer move um, anyway yeah I hope you enjoy that story and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video we're like, deep in a forest here in Ireland beautiful beautiful views beautiful sounds uh, maybe easier to hear those beautiful sounds without me talking, but anyway, there you go. Thanks very much for watching.
looks like it's gonna rain now. So if we're gonna get out of Dodge. It's gone really, really quiet as well. Apart from the birds. No wind. Yeah. Tried to get deer today, but uh, they were a bit too expensive. Anyway, we had some fun. Beautiful views, beautiful day. Uh, just, oh yeah, I'm out since nine o'clock. It's now almost three, I'd say. So, oh. hopefully, now it doesn't catch me. The rain. Bit of a climb out of here now. Just a bit of a climb. Right. For a little hike out of here. This is a bit of rain coming now. Leg, leg lifts. That's what today has been. Oh, we're nearly out. A couple of more meters to go. Like a rumble. Thank you. 